Hey guys, it's Mr. Kennedy back with video 13. We're going to be talking about mutations. Now, when you think about mutations, you often think about something being very bad, but I don't want you to think about that when you think about a mutation. A mutation can be good or bad. You know, um, when I think of mutation, I think of, you know, somebody being born deformed or some animal being deformed in some way. But in actuality, you know, think about the X-Men, for example. How cool would it be to have x-ray vision or be able to fly or be able to run at supersonic speed. So mutations are good things. Uh, in real life, uh, mutation is a change in the DNA sequence. And if it allows the animal to better to survive, then it's a good trait. For example, if you were an animal that lived in Alaska and the mutation made you turn red, it probably wouldn't be good for survival. You'd stand out. But if you were white, where the other animals of your species were brown, it might make you survive and be able to reproduce and pass those traits on. Now, if the, muta if the mutation makes the organism stronger, as I read down here at the bottom, then it can allow the organism to survive better, and that's good. So not all mutations are bad. That's the first thing I want you to, to know. Okay, next is types of mutations. There are basically three types of mutations I want you to know for the test. The first one is a point mutation. If we look down here, a point mutation is a change in a single base pair. And what that means is if we have a sequence A, U, G, C, 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 A, A, U, what's going to happen if we were reading it normally, we'd read these three, these three, these three, and we can look them up on the chart and figure out what amino acids they are. Well, a point mutation, this C, for some reason, is going to turn to maybe an A. So now you read A, U, G, A, C, C, A, A, U. So it's only going to affect one amino acid, just one amino acid. It's not going to affect the one before or the one after the point mutation. Point mutations are usually not too bad. I'll give you a sentence down here. You know, the dog bit the cat. I hope everybody can figure out why I use three-letter words. Three letter, I use three-letter words because three letters make a codon. So this represents codons, right? The dog bit the cat. Now, if I change one letter in the sentence... It changed the sentence to dog, dog bit the car. Now, it doesn't mean change the sentence a lot. Uh, it does change, change it slightly, but it doesn't. you still get the overall effect that the dog's biting something. So usually, these are, point mutations are not too bad. We, a lot of us probably have point mutations in our body right now, and we really don't see any effect from it. Now, the second type of mutation is a frame shift mutation. As you look down here, the frame shift mutation is the addition or deletion of a nitrogen base. Now, if I go A, U, G, C, 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 A, A, U again, normally we would read three, 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 and those would be the three amino acids. Well, if we have a point mutation, I mean, excuse me, a frame shift mutation, let's say this C is eliminated. Now I read A, U, G still, but now look, C, C, A, 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 whatever the next letter is, it not only changes the amino acid that mutation happens in, but it changes every amino acid after. See, it causes an effect on every amino acid that follows the mutation. You, you can see how this would be devastating because it would make stops not appear that should appear. This would be one cause of cancer. It would make starts not appear that should appear, so you would be missing proteins or amino acids. Uh, point mutations are very bad. Now, give, go back to the same sentence again, the dog bit the cat. I eliminate an O, now it becomes the dick, ick, the ick, or whatever. It makes no sense, whatever. It messes everything up. So frame shift mutations are very bad. Um, now, the third type of mutation is chromosomal mutation. And just turn to page 308 in your book, and these four are there on your, on your book, and they make total sense. You know, it's a change in the actual chromosome. And, you know, you got a chromosome you know, and you've got letters like A, B, C, D, and then down here you have, you know, A, B, C, D, whatever. These are the alleles. In deletion, what happens is one of these is going to be eliminated. So it's, you're going to lose part of the chromosome. Insertion, you're going to actually, I had to clear it. Insertion, and I'll redraw it here. In insertion, you would actually add a letter. Okay, actually add a letter. So you add some inversion, you're going to flip. So maybe E and D would flip location. So it would read A, B, C, 
ED instead of that, so they'd be in different locations. And translocation, you maybe have the big A come down here and the little A go up top. It actually would actually relocate on a different chromosome. Um, now, chromosome mutation, the big thing you need to remember about them is chromosome mutations are usually caused by non-disjunction. Now, let's, let's go back and remember what this is. If you go through um, meiosis, okay, you go through meiosis, you start out with a cell, you know, you got these chromosomes in the cell, the cell splits, you know, okay, you got these chromosomes. It, during metaphase, the chromosomes line up down the middle. Normally, a chromosome goes each way, but during non-disjunction, you have two chromosomes go one way for some reason. So in humans, you would normally have 23 chromosomes in each cell created, but in non-disjunction, you would end up with like 22 in one and 24 in the other. So you got a mistake. So you remember, if you remember, this is a cause of Down syndrome or monosomy. So Remember, non-disjunction is often linked to any type of chromosome mutations. Now, the last thing is, what actually causes these mutations? Anything that causes a mutation is called a mutagen. A mutagen, these days, can be anything, from sitting on a chair to drinking a Diet Coke. But we really narrow it down to four main things. Radiation causes mutations. Now, we get radiation from unknown places sometimes. So you can not only get radiation from a nuclear power plant, you can even get radiation from a refrigerator or from a... Um, Air conditioner, having Freon in it, would be a type of radiation. You know, I, I used to go to the doctor when I was little because I had some um, stomach issues. And, you know, they, they'd put me there to give me an x-ray, and they, they'd put me in my skivvies, and, and they'd they put this lead jacket on them and go stand behind a wall. You know, I'll do something was up. Well, that's because radiation or x-rays, when it enters your body, it never leaves. And you have to be very careful because it can cause mutations to occur, point point mutations, frame shift mutations, even chromosome mutations. Uh, the next one is chemicals. You know, the obvious ones are your, narcotic, your narcotics, uh, your carcinogens, your alcohols. But any kind of chemical you put in your body, even types of things you eat, could cause a mutation. Um, UV lights, the next one, being out in the sun. We, we realize there's a high cause of skin, skin cancer these days, and it's caused by the sun, so that's another mutation. And then high temperatures. Any, usually high temperatures can affect or denature different things, different proteins, because they can cause mutation. All right, I hope these uh, helped you, and I hope you understand that mutations are not always a bad thing. And that's video 13.